All right, everybody. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Byron. I'm going to take you through it today. So uh, let's go ahead and lay down on our backs to get started. And just rest your arms down by your sides. Close your eyes. Take a couple breaths here. We call this one Shavasana. Usually we end here. And today we begin here. So they say that uh, that through stillness, one can see things more clearly. And so when one can see things more clearly, uh, basically that's where the truth exists. So in a sense, we're practicing for truth. Yoga is just a practice of seeing things for what they are. So let go of all your expectations for the next hour. At the same time, try not to dwell on the past. The past is already downloaded into you. So if you listen closely enough, those past injuries, you know, anything that's necessary, it'll be there. But for now, let's go ahead and take a nice big inhale through the nose. Hold your breath to the very top of the lungs. And then open your mouth and release it. <sighs> Good. And then dropping into that nice deep rhythmic style of breathing, just in and out of the nose as long as that's possible. Look for a little bit of space with your breath. Good. Meaning, there's a little space at the top, a little at the bottom. And then let's just let the breath be all we're really worried about. Let the breath distract you from the body. So you're not going to obsess over all the technical stuff. It's nice to know it, but it's not going to be you know, the main thing that we're doing. Good. Go ahead and point your toes back. Good. Extend through your heels. Reach your arms over your head. You get a f start to hook your thumbs. doesn't matter which thumb goes in front. Just hook the thumbs. Start to pull on your thumbs. Feel your shoulders. Start to activate a little bit. As you hook the thumbs here, try not to, to bow the ribs out. Pull the ribs down onto the floor. Good. And then bend the left knee into your chest. Reach down. Hug it. And then twist. Drop the left knee over to your right. Open your left chest over to the left. First spinal twist of the day. So nice and easy. The no most non-abrasive entry into the body. That's basically what we're trying to do with all these postures. Just find the least abrasive way to get in there. And then come back to the center. Extend the left leg forward. Point your toes back. Reach your arms over your head. Hook your opposite thumb in front. Pull on the thumbs. Pull on them a lot. Like if you were to just pull on your thumbs for about 10 minutes, you'd start to break a sweat. Quite, quite a bit of a sweat. And really drive through those heels. And then switch. This time right knee into the chest. And then drop the right knee over to the left. Open your right arm over to the right. Easy spinal twist. Go ahead. Hmm. Go ahead, come back to the center line. Hug both the knees into your chest. Curl your nose up to your knees. Interlace the fingers behind your head, please. Lift your chest. Just a little bit of core activation. Good. Stretch both legs straight up to the ceiling. Good. And then simply lower your right leg as you inhale. Just hold it. Take a few breaths here. Notice you can lift your chest a little higher when you lower the leg. Good. Good. Lift your right leg. Good. Lower your left leg halfway. Hold it. Try to lift your chest an inch higher. That's where the work's coming. The legs aren't doing much. And then lift your left leg. Lower both legs halfway. Hold it. Lift your chest an inch higher. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Reach your arms forward. Good. Really reach. Lift the chest higher if you can. And then downward facing dog. Release all the way down. Maybe rock up into boat. And plant the palms down. Step your feet back. And spread the webbing of your fingers nice and wide. If you need to pedal the legs, pedal the legs. Start to withdraw your eyes from the practice. You know, if you're brand new to the practice, obviously you've got to look around a little bit just to kind of know what you're doing, but just try not to do it obsessively. So if there's anything you really need to look at, get it out of the way. I know most of you in your practice, and uh, you know, seeing you guys look around, you already know what you're doing. That's going to take away from your practice. So stay in that focus zone. Okay, let's slide forward to plank position, shoulders above your wrists. 
And so we're just going to warm up through plank and all its variations here in the beginning. First one, we're just going to hold it. Yeah, you can always have the knees down here if you need them down. Otherwise, make it a full body pose. So you're pulling the chest forward. You're drawing the heels down towards the, the back wall. And if you think about it, the core is there to restrict movement. It's a protective layer. So if you're moving right now, a lot of that's because your core just needs to get stronger. Now, some of your eyeballs are moving a lot. That's a little different. That means you're distracted. Take one more inhale here. Pull back to downward facing dog as you exhale. Let's do it a couple, a couple more times. Inhale, slide forward, plank position. And then back to downward facing dog as you exhale. But again, inhale, slide forward, plank. And then downward facing dog, exhale. Good, one more time, inhale, slide forward. And then back to downward facing dog. Go ahead and unplug your hands, crawl them back to your feet so you're in what's called a forward fold at the back of your space. Take your elbows, clasp those, release the neck. Just let gravity start to become your ally. So I have no plans on making the practice difficult today. You know. Gravity might have something else to say about that. So you're either resisting it or you're using it, right? Resisting it in strength po postures, surrendering to it in resting postures. Let's change the, uh, the hands. Let's take them behind the back, interlace the fingers, and then straighten out the arms. If you can't get the knuckles together, then maybe use a towel or a strap. You know, modifying the practice is the name of the game. Good. And then release your hands down to the ground. Downward facing dog. Crawl all the way back out to the top of the mat. And really lift your hips up high. And feel that nice length. To come back to plank position. And make sure those index fingers point straight ahead. I didn't mention it earlier, but you don't want to turn the index fingers pointed in. It's going to create problems for your wrist eventually. Otherwise, listen, I want you to crawl your hands forward to any degree that challenges you intelligently, which might be one inch. It might be three feet. If you need the knees down, you can set the knees down. Good. Yeah, we call this calisthenics. When you add the breath to it, it becomes more yogic. Good. I watched a video of an 85-year-old man who is in better shape than any of us are in right now two nights ago. And all he did was stuff like this. You know, no weights, supporting his own body weight. Yeah, we'll come back to this at the end of the practice. For now, crawl the hands back so you're in regular plank pose. Take a big inhale plank pose. Lower all the way down to your belly as you exhale. Good. Keep your hands where they are. Release the tops of your feet. Pull the elbows in tight to the sides of your body. Now, don't change those. Just start to press your arms a little bit straighter. Take an inhale. Roll your shoulders back. Lift your chest. And then exhale, chin to floor. Good. Three more. Inhale. Roll the shoulders back. Lift a little higher. Exhale, chin down. Good. Two more times. Inhale. Open up the thoracic spine. And then exhale, chin down. One more time. Inhale, open up, roll. Let's hold this one for a few breaths. Just refine it. Pull the elbows in a little tighter. Pull the heart forward. Glutes are relaxed. Take one more inhale. Downward facing dog. Chin down, curl the toes. Press up and press back. Hmm. Oh, that's it. Now take an inhale. Wind your hips back. Bend the knees. Look forward. Walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat. Good. Flat back inhale. Lengthen out. Fold in as you exhale. You want to stand all the way up, sweep your arms up and over your head, and then pull the hands to your heart center. Take a few breaths here, close the eyes. Yeah, think about this posture, shoulders down, root down to the feet. And perhaps dedicate your practice. You know, if you have something weighing on your mind, you can practice to release it. You could practice for it. And personalization. You know, they call it power yoga, but that really means empowerment yoga, not just power, sweat. And what empowers you today? Do that. Let's take a big inhale through the nose. Hold the breath in. Open the mouth. Let it go. <sighs> Open the eyes. Sweep your arms up. Inhale. 
Forward fold as you exhale, lead all the way forward. Now listen, flat back inhale, just step back to plank position. Step back, bring the feet all the way together, and start to roll onto the outer edge of your right foot. Slowly reach your left arm straight up. We call this side plank, yet another variation of plank pose. Nice way to warm the body up. It's also a nice way to hurt yourself if you're not doing it correctly. So if you need to set your right knee down, feel free. Otherwise, extend your left arm out and over your left ear. Maybe lift your hips a little bit higher in the air. But breathe. Yeah. Then extend your left arm up as you inhale. Switch sides, left hand down. It's a whole different side. You might modify this one, outer edge of the left foot. Slowly reach your right arm. I mean, think about your left shoulder. It's a ball and socket joint. Just like our hips are ball and socket joints, only we're used to standing all the time, so we naturally press out of our legs. Press out of your left shoulder. Extend your right arm over your right ear. And notice where the strain is. Keep the strain in the muscles that are being used, not in the ones that are not being used. The tongue. You know, we're not Michael Jordan here. Keep the tongue in. And right arm up, inhale. Let's meet in plank pose. Take a big juicy inhale, top of plank, and then lower down nice and slow as you exhale. Good cobra, maybe upward facing dog if you know it and you're ready. And then exhale back to downward facing dog, nice and steady. A couple more rounds of that. Inhale, lift the hips and bend the knees. Step or lightly hop through, top of the mat please. Flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold and exhale to deepen. Stand all the way up, sweep your arms overhead. And then hands to heart center. Good. Do it again. Inhale, sweep and reach. Move with your breath. Forward fold as you exhale. Dive all the way out. You're flat back. Inhale, lengthen. Same thing. Just step back to plank position. Just step back. Feet together. Good. This time, lift your left toes an inch off the floor and roll onto the outer edge of your right foot. Keep your left foot lifted above your right. If you need the right knee down, set it down and lift your left foot off the ground. Left arms up. And then if, you know, that left frontal hip point starts to move towards the ceiling, try to square it down to face the side of the room. And left arm up, inhale. Left hand down. Both toes down, switch. Lift your right toes. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. Reach your right arm up. Yeah, you know, for some of us, it's the first little opportunity for our egos to creep in, which is always a nice opportunity to release it. You know, that ego is such an illusion anyways. You'll find that, uh, you know, this mind will throw all kinds of illusions at you. Good plank pose. Right hand down, both feet down. Take a nice big juicy inhale. Lower down, nice and slow as you exhale. Inhale, peel that layer of your heart open. Downward facing dog as you exhale, hips up and back. Did you know that you're only going to have maybe two original thoughts today? Did you know that? Maybe a thousand of the same thoughts you're going to repeatedly think about today. Or maybe two original ones. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating when you start to think about it. Yoga is a way to kind of let all that stuff go. Good. Have no thoughts. Last round, inhale, lift the hips, bend the knees, steppers spring through, top of the mat, please. Flat back, inhale, lengthen out, fold in as you exhale. Last time, stand all the way up, sweep your arms up and over the head, and then hands where the heart is as you exhale. Do it again. Inhale, sweep and reach. Stretch that body up. Forward fold as you exhale. Dip and dive forward. Flat back. Inhale, lengthen. Just step back to plank position. The feet are together. Now, this is a little different this time. It starts the same way. Roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. Reach your left arm up. Now, if your knee's on the floor, you're going to skip this next part. Place your left foot in front of your right foot. Left heel touches your right toes. Seal the outer edge of your left foot. And bring the right knee to your chest. Right knee to your chest. Right knee to your chest. Good. Hold here or straighten your right leg. Take three. Good. All the way out here. Good. Last two. Last one. Plank pose. Left hand down. Feet together. Switch sides. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. Reach your right arm up. Again, if the, lean, if the knee's down, skip it. Otherwise, right foot just in front of your left toes. Touch the heel to your toes. Seal the outer edge of your right foot, but bring the left knee high up into the chest. Just breathe. Yeah, you can straighten the leg if you need a little more for three. Steady breath for two. Yeah, steady mind for one. 
plank pose, right hand down, left toes back. Take a juicy inhale, top of plank, lower down nice and slow. Exhale, cobra upward facing, your choice. Downward facing dog as you exhale, nice job. Good. Separate your feet a little wider than the shoulders. Point the toes out slightly, and as you unplug the hands, crawl them back to your feet, malasana, yogi squat. Bend your knees. And as you look at your feet, try not to have them pointed all the way out. But again, the feet are a little wider than the shoulders here. It's pretty wide. Good. Just squat as far down as you can comfortably. Good. Now slide the chest up. We're going to do a few of these today. First, I just want you to feel what's happening. Feel that lower back spread nice and wide. Good, so it's a passive squat when you're like this. I want you to interlace your fingers, turn your palms, and press them straight up. So it's no longer quite as passive. It's a little more active this way. So just kind of notice if the feet are now starting to roll onto the outer inner edges of the feet, try to press them down equally. Good, lift your hips one inch higher. So now it's not passive at all. And then stand all the way up. Good, hands to heart. Walk all the way up to the top of your mat. We'll come back to that later in case you'll miss it. Back to chair pose. Bend the knees, squat down, reach up. So first chair pose of the day. Good. Really hug that lower belly in. Hmm. Good. Balancing on your, right, on your left foot, lift the right knee into your chest. Good, switch right foot down, lift the left knee into your chest. Good, left foot down, take an inhale. Stand up, hands to your heart as you exhale. Good, come right back to chair pose. This time sink just an inch deeper, reach an inch higher. Try to get your torso a little higher. Good, this time balance on your right foot, lift your left foot up. Good, now listen, a little different this time. We call it crescent pose. Drop step your left toes to the back of the mat. Yeah, you're on the back toes here. Distribute most of the weight into your left leg and start to scoop your tailbone down underneath you. Yeah, find a lift in your lower belly and then try to spread that upper back nice and wide so you're wrapping those triceps a little forward. Good, reach your left arm forward and reach your right arm behind you. Start to rotate from your torso without dragging your left hip with you. And just breathe. It usually helps me if I hug my inner thighs towards each other for balance. Good. Inhale, reach up, crescent pose. Good. Listen, hands to the ground. I want you to step your back foot about six inches closer in. Spin it flat on the ground. Straighten your right knee so you're in a nice isolated stretch for your right leg. And just try to even out your hips. And a lot of that has to do with your foot position. If your hands aren't on the floor, there's an opportunity for the ego to creep in. Don't let it. They don't need to be on the floor. They can be on your leg. They can be on blocks. Good. Slowly bend your right knee as you inhale. Step your left foot forward to meet your right foot as you exhale. Flat back inhale. Lengthen out. Fold in as you exhale. Chair pose. Bend the knees. Squat down. Good. Lift the right knee into your chest. And just hold it there. Nobody likes to hold a one-legged chair. I don't think they do anyway. It's, it's kind of a miserable pose. You've got to hold all the weight in your left leg. Good. Pitch the chest forward. Crescent pose. Drop step your right toes back of the mat. And if you don't stick your landing, who cares? You know, yoga is not about being perfect. You draw the tailbone down. In fact, yoga is not about falling at all. It's about getting up. It's about being resilient. It's about having a better attitude if you fall, about having more gratitude. Good. Reach your right arm forward. Reach your left arm back. Turn from your torso. Good. Yeah, and mainly just breathe. Let the faucet of your breath turn on. Again, the breath is just going to distract you from the body. That's all it's doing. Good. Turn back to center. Inhale. Reach up. And then nice stretch. Hands to the floor. Step your back foot closer, about six inches in. Spin it flat. Straighten your front knee. And just breathe. No expectations, no judgment. 
you know, it might be the only time of the day that, that you, you kind of get to be judgment free. It's kind of a sacred time. Slowly bend your left knee, inhale. Step your right foot forward as you exhale. Good, flat back, inhale, lengthen out. F step or hop the feet back, lower slowly down. Full vinyasa, lower down slow. Good, cobra, upward facing, nice and easy. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Mm. Before we move on, take a nice big inhale through your nose. And then open your mouth, let it go. <sighs> Good, moving right along. Good, unplug the hands, crawl them back to your toes. Hook your big toes, first two fingers. And take an inhale, pull your chest out. Fold in as you exhale. I always think this is a good you know, place to the practice. It's like a barometer. We've reached kind of a milestone where we've completed a warm-up series. You're starting to feel more mobile. And the stimulation into the body now has led to circulation. And that circulation usually starts to feel pretty good. Good. Go ahead and release your toes. Bring the hands to your hip bones. Little bend in the knees. Pull your heart forward, please. Come all the way up to standing as you root down. Step your left foot forward and turn to the right. Good. Open your arms nice and wide to the sides. Widen your feet as wide as your wrists. Look over your right fingertips. Setting up for warrior two, spin your right toes the same way the fingertips are. Resist through your back leg, but bend your right knee 90 degrees. And my, most of all, I just want you to feel even in the posture. So you're not collapsing back. You're not leaning too far forward. So really stretch your left chest open so you're not turning. Good. Let's look over the right fingertips. You'll see what's going to happen. Good. Keep the integrity of your lower body, but place your right forearm on top of your right thigh. Good. Reach your left arm up and extend it over your left ear, palm facing down. Really stretch that elbow straight, and then roll your left rib cage open as much as it feels good. Good. Now keep everything the same, but bring your left hand to your left hip. Start to bend that elbow behind you a little bit. So just pull it in as much as you can. You'll feel your chest stretch. Yeah, just kind of tuck it back there. Yeah. Good. Now consider reaching your right arm forward with the palm facing up. Now as you consider that, keep your left chest opening. Yeah, so reach it right out there. This way. Out here. There you go. Four. Nice. This way right here. Good. Reverse warrior. Inhale. Sweep it all the way back. Keep your left hand on your left hip. It's a different variation. It's the one I prefer, actually. Yeah, really sink in. Good. Back to warrior two. Open your arms. Good. Straighten your right knee. Let's do it on the other side. Pivot your right foot in parallel with your left. Spin your left toes out to the front of the room. Bend your left knee slowly. Resist through your back leg. Yeah. And just feel. Just feel what's happening in the skeleton. There's a lot of little details that you could really obsess over here. But most of all, as long as you can see your big left toe, you're safe in that knee. Good. And then place your left forearm on your left thigh. Right arm straight up and over your right ear. So the right palm faces down, the left palm can face up. Yeah. And you just continue to roll those right ribs open. Good. Everybody, right hand, right hip. Pin that right elbow behind you and feel that right chest stretch open. And then most of all, just keep the right chest open. And if you did it on the other side, reach that left arm forward on this side. And you'll notice added leverage, so there's more strength required in the lower body. Your legs stay the same. Reverse warrior. Everybody turn the left palm up and sweep it behind you. Nice. Feel the lateral stretch all the way from that left waist crease to that very top left rib. Back to warrior two, both hands to your hips, straighten your front knee, pivot your left foot in parallel to your right. Good. Look at your feet, make sure the toes are angled in slightly. Pull the elbows back towards each other. Take an inhale, lift your chest, and then fold forward as you exhale. And once you're past halfway, if you want to release the hands, you could do that. There's a lot of options. You could hook the big toes. You could grab the outer edges of the feet. 
your tripod headstand if you want to do something a little more acrobatic. You could press into a handstand split. Either way, you know, that's still not about the shape that you choose. It's about the breath. State of mind, not state of body. You see, yoga is not a verb. You can't yoga it. I didn't yoga it today. You can't even do yoga. You can only hope to attain it since it's a state of mind. Good. If you went upside down, slowly come all the way back down. Let's just bring the hands all the way back up to the hips. Pull the heart forward and come up to standing. Look to the front of the room, to the left, and then step up to the front of your mat. Chair pose, bend the knees, squat down, reach up, inhale. Forward fold as you exhale. Nice. Flat back, inhale, lengthen out through that spine. Step or hop the feet back, attempting to blend the body, breath, and mind. Lower slow. Cobra, inhale, feel the rhythm of your own flow. Downward facing dog, exhale. Squeeze the right knee into your chest. Shoulders above the wrists. Look at your right thumb. Step your right foot there, back foot flat. We call it warrior one. Sweep your arms up. And if it's uncomfortable on your ankle, you can always skip it and do that previous crescent pose. Otherwise, use your back foot, your back leg, to steer your right hip back. So you're, a, you're in a vehicle right now. Good. The feet are the steering wheel. The hips are the tires. The breath is the gas pedal. Always easing on and off of it. Never full throttle. Take one more inhale. Reach higher. Hands to the floor. Exhale. Right leg back. Lower slow. Elbows in tight. That's it. Cobra upward facing. Make it feel just right. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Steady breath. Steady mind. Left knee to the chest. Shoulders above the wrist. Yeah. Try to place your left foot by your left thumb. If you have to pull it up there, no big deal. Warrior one, back foot flat. Reach your arms straight up. Good again. Dig the right. It's like you're trying to make a footprint of your right foot onto the mat. Good. That's it. Take one more inhale, just a little higher. Hands to the floor. Exhale. Left leg back, lower slow before they expire. Cobra inhale, spread the collarbone wide. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Just keep looking inside, not outside. There's nothing out there that's going to help you with your yoga practice. It's all within. One round done. Three more to go. Inhale, lift the hips, bend the knees. Step or hop through. Top of the mat, please. Flat back inhale, lengthen. Fold and exhale to deep and chair pose. Squat down. Reach up high. Stand up, hands to heart. Back to the midline. Back to chair pose, we call it Surya Namaskar B. Forward fold, exhale gracefully as can be. Flat back, inhale, linger if you need to. Step or hop the feet back, lower slowly. One breath per movement. Inhale, open heart, open chest. Down dog, just do your best. Step your right foot through, back foot flat. And warrior one, inhale to the sky. And then exhale, hands to the earth. When you decide. If you're behind me, it's an illusion. If you're ahead of me, it's an illusion. Follow your breath, cobra. Downward facing. Do the left side on your own. So maybe if your breath is three or four seconds long, then your movement's three or four seconds long. We all sneak in extra breaths. It's fine. That's why we call it a practice. It's not a performance. Hmm. Good. Now I said we were going to do three. I think let's just do one more. Inhale, lift the hips, bend the knees, step or hop, top of the mat. Flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold and exhale, deepen. Chair pose, bend the knees, squat down, reach up. Stand up, hands to heart. Right back to chair pose, we call it Utkatasana. Forward fold, exhale, Uttanasana. Flat back, inhale, Arda. Step or hop the feet back, lower down through what we call Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha or Bhujangasana. Back to Ardha Mukha, Svanasana. Step the right foot through, back foot flat, called Virabhadrasana. One, inhale, one breath. Hands to the floor through the full traditional vinyasa. Good. Inhale. Exhale, finish the left side on your own. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Hmm. Hmm. 
And once you get all the way back to down dog, set the knees down on the floor. Press your knees together. Separate your ankles about a foot or so. And then take a seat in between your feet. You can sit on a block if you need to. And either rest the hands in your laps or maybe brace the weight on the floor. You can recline back a little bit if you'd like. <laughs> Don't view this as a break, please. Now, sure, the body gets to rest a little bit, but your mind, if you let the mind rest, it works differently. It's going to go all over the place, past, future, anywhere but here. Maybe you close the eyes, you minimize distractions. You see, to rest your body, you just got to be still. It's simple. To be still in your mind, you have to focus it on one thing. That's why the breath becomes such a useful tool. You know, some people have trouble with deep breathing, so two or three seconds, inhale is fine. Just try to match it on the exhale. If you've been doing this for a while, you might be able to get that breath seven seconds, eight seconds long. Maybe even on the exhale. I've been working on trying to get it up to a minute. I don't think it'll ever happen, maybe. Either way, it's a practice. You know, just by being here today, just by fulfilling the objective of showing up to do something that you said you were going to do, you're going to feel good. You know, if we were to just move our bodies, not focus on breathing, you'd feel good when you left. If we didn't move our bodies and just sat here breathing with our eyes closed, you'd feel much different when you left. It's the combination of all the things that makes it so dynamic. You know, if you're ready and with me, Crawl the hands all the way out in front of you. Let's meet back and downward facing dog. Curl the toes. Lift your hips up and back. Good. And from down dog, lift your right leg. Bend your right knee. Open your hip gradually until it feels kind of sweet. Uh, I say that, and then some people tell me after class that it doesn't feel sweet at all for them. So I guess it's completely relative to your experience if you're tight in those hips. Now let's go to warrior two from this way. So step your right foot through between your hands. Spin your back foot flat. And windmill that left arm all the way open behind you. Yet only this time, keep your body the same, but look to the wall in front of you. So, good. good. Reach your right arm straight up to the sky. Keep it up there. Take your left hand behind your back. Good. Try to climb the left hand as high up the spine as you can, like between your shoulder blades. And then bend your right elbow and try to connect your hands. I use a towel or a shirt here, personally, to connect my hands. Good. Now, keep facing the same way you're facing with your eyes. Try not to bow your ribs forward. That's kind of tricky for some of us. And out of the corner of your right eye, can you still see that that right knee alignment is still over the pinky toe instead of the big toe? You're keeping all of the before-mentioned things, start to lean a little bit to the right, just a little bit. Now some of you can lean more. Some of you don't need to lean more. Yeah, maybe lean almost all the way over your right thigh. But keep your left chest opening. Good. And breathe. Good. Lean this way. Good. Same with you. Lean this way. Good. Same with you. Lean this way. To the right. Sorry, you're on video. <laughs> Good. Reach your right arm forward just like we did earlier. Take a couple breaths. Take a couple breaths. Good. You should be leaning over that right thigh. Good. Leaning over it. Good. Place your right hand to the floor on the inside of your right foot. Good. Keep your left hand either where it is or take your right hand underneath your right leg full bind. So we call it a full bind or a half bind. You're already kind of in a half bind. Either way, just breathe. Open up and see what you can find. It's like you're going into a deep, dark cave every time you go into a pose, and it's like you don't know what you're going to find. It might be booby-trapped. It might be a treasure chest. No expectations. Everybody release your right hand down, left arm up. With pleasure, press back up to warrior two. Good. Take one more inhale. Turn your right palm up, reverse warrior. And then downward facing dog, hands to the ground, step back. You can take the vinyasa if you choose. Hmm. Hmm. 
Good. Let's just move right along. Lift your left leg, bend your left knee, open up the hip mindfully. It's all mindful. And warrior two, step the left foot through between your hands, back foot flat, windmill the right arm all the way open behind you. And just set that lower body up. Go ahead and look to the red wall. So you're looking straight ahead. This time the left arm is going to come up. The right hand behind the back and all the way up the spine. And then maybe connect the hands. Use a towel, whatever the case may be. You'll notice a big di difference from side to side. Now as you keep your right chest open, make sure out of the corner of your eye you can see the alignment of your left knee stays the same. Lean to the left. Yeah, any degree. Some of you are going to go pretty far. Some of you not so far. It's not a competition. No, if, there, if it was a competition, it's who can relax the most in a difficult situation. It's a breathing competition, if anything. Good. Right arm stays where it is. Left arm reaches forward just for a couple breaths. Good. Reach, reach, reach. And then use your left hand. Set it down on the floor inside your left foot. Half bind or full bind. Yeah. Mainly just open that right chest and mainly just breathe to distract your mind away from the position of the body. Good. Good. And then slowly release your left hand down, right arm up, and with pure enjoyment, press up the warrior two. Nice job. Left palm up, inhale, reverse your flow. Back to downward facing dog. Lower down slow if you want. Hmm. Good. Now it's all starting to happen. All those layers are starting to melt away. Take a nice big inhale through the nose. <laughs> Open your mouth, let it go. Ah. Good. So your arms should be so strong right here. And downward facing dog. As if you had one arm and you had to practice with one arm, but both arms are just that strong. And that's what helps you with that floating motion if you ever want to hop or float to the top of the mat. So what we're going to do here is we're going to meet in a yogi squat at the top of the mat, but I want you to bend the knees, inhale, look forward, step or hop into a squat. Yeah, so with the feet wide apart. Good. And then from here, hop the feet back, downward facing dog. Good. And then again, bend the knees, look forward, step or hop into your squat. It takes a little practice. Jump back to downward facing dog. We're just going to do three more times. Bend the knees, look forward, hop, or s hop and do your squat. Yeah. And then hop back to downward facing dog. Do two more times. Try not to have too much fun. Bend the knees, look forward, step or hop. And back into down dog one more time. Good. On this one, I want you to just stay in your squat when you, when you land it at the front. Good. Yeah, nice job. Got some good hoppers in here today. Good. Good. Find your squat. Separate the feet if you need to. You need to. This time, interlace all but the index finger. Shoot it straight up. Lift your hips an inch. Engage your lower belly. Lock it in. And then press all the way to standing. And do it again. Bend the knees. Good. I want you to do this at your own pace. It's not explosive. Tailbone down. Press up. Engage your core. Inhale, squat. Good. On your own, exhale, straighten. Just do about seven or eight more of these. I don't want you to rush through it. I want you to be conscious of what your knees are doing. Knees stay open. Not all the way open. Good. Definitely do not cave them in. Engage the core on the way up. Flex the glutes at the top. The last few. Sinking down. Exhale, pressing up. Good. Inhale, sinking down. Exhale, pressing up. Good. Two more. Inhale. Exhale, press. Good. Last one. Inhale. And exhale, press. Go ahead and stay here. Hands to heart. 
chair pose. Heel toe the feet all the way together to touch. Feet parallel. So I want you guys to feel this. I want your butt to be burning tomorrow, not just today. Shift the weight into your right foot. Lift your left foot up. Back to one-legged chair. Yeah, but don't straighten your right leg. Remember that transition earlier? Crescent pose. Drop step your left toes. Back of the mat. Here we are again. Only this time a deeper twist. Hands to the heart center. Turn all the way to the right side of the room. Hook your left elbow, outer right thigh. Yeah, now the tendency here is to drag your left hip with you. You don't need to. Yeah, you want to try to keep that left hip nice and level. Yeah, if you need to set the left knee down, if you think about it more than once, that's a sign that you should just do it. And we have all these indicators, our intuition, our emotional guidance system. Just listen to those things. That's our compass. Now listen, instead of jumping up like a jack-in-the-box, go slow and smoothly, engage all the muscle fibers back to crescent pose. Inhale, here we go. Now like a smooth, skilled craftsman, spin your back foot flat, windmill open back to warrior two. Only this time, straighten your right knee. Triangle pose. Inhale, reach for the front wall, second street. Exhale, drop your right hand down below your right knee. Somewhere usually around the right ankle or above it for 95% of us. Good. Continue to roll your left rib cage open and then extend your left arm over the left ear. Try to wrap that left tricep down. That's it. Now it's like your anchor is your belly, right? But you're trying to express your little heart's desires through all four limbs. Stay with your breath, which sounds lovely. Good. Now transitions are a big part of the practice. Here's one. Reach your left arm up. Stay with the flow. Look down in front of your big right toe. Bend your right knee. Crawl your right hand about a foot in front of your big right toe. And lift and launch your left leg up. As we take one giant leap for mankind. In memory of Neil Armstrong, who passed away a year or two ago, unfortunately. If you don't know who that is, I feel really old right now. Good. Spread your chest open. Spread the hips. Maybe you can feel that connective tissue on the inside of your right thigh. And remember, don't fear the fall. That's like fearing learning. Good. Now listen. Keeping your left leg up, bring your left hand down. Put a soft bend in your right knee to help you. Square your left hip even with your right. Drop your heavy head closer to your toes. Yeah, just let your neck relax. You know, the neck is a vulnerable joint. It's 15 pounds as it is. If you hold a pressure in a vulnerable position, you're going to create injuries. Plus, I see some new people in here with some 30-pound heads. Let that stuff relax, guys. Climb up to your fingertips. Pull your chest forward. Good. We call this one the twisting version of half-moon pose. So what you're going to do is reach your right arm straight up. And you're not going to set your left foot down. Touch the ceiling with your right hand. Kick a hole through the back wall with your left foot for three. Almost there for two. Last one, inhale. Right hand down, feet together. Woo! Flat back, inhale. Lengthen, stay in the flow. Fold and exhale, back to chair pose. Last one of the day. Bend the knees, squat down. What do you say? Shift the weight into your left foot. Lift the right knee into your chest and hold it without straightening your left leg. Can you enjoy hit this? If you can enjoy this, you're going to enjoy the, the rest of your day. Pitch the chest forward, crescent pose, drop step your right toes back of the mat. Draw the tailbone down. If you didn't stick your landing, adjust. Big twist, hands to heart. Turn all the way over to the left. Wrap the right elbow, tricep, or armpit. Consider setting the right knee down. Consider all things. Always considering. Always evaluating. But mostly just breathing. Good. Hmm. Good. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I've seen it, and it's close. Without jerking the body around, squeeze the inner thighs back to crescent pose. Inhale, reach up. And then again, skillfully spin your back foot flat. Open up warrior two. 
Just straighten your left knee. Should feel really good. Triangle pose. Reach, reach, reach to infinity and beyond. Drop your left hand below the knee, above the ankle. And again, just roll those right ribs open. And then extend your right arm out and over that right ear. Really roll that tricep down. Find a little bit more space. Nice. And again, the belly's your anchor. Draw it in. The limbs are expressing your little heart's desires. Transition. Right arm up, looking down. Bend your left knee. Pick a spot on the ground. Crawl the left hand forward to that spot you're looking at. And then when you're ready, lift and launch your right leg up. Let it feel like you're lifting out of this pose. Like if gravity didn't exist, you'd probably just float right up to the ceiling like in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Good. Now the easiest way to come out of this, bend the left knee softly. Bring your right hand to the ground. Square your right hip even with your left and drop your heavy head. Yeah. Usually the body is just enough. Remember when I said you're either resisting gravity or you're surrendering to it? You're doing a little bit of both here. Torso surrenders, right leg resists. Good. Now climbing up to those fingertips, pull your heart forward. I usually keep a little bend in my left knee. Fire the right leg up, twisting version of half moon pose. Extend your left arm straight up without moving your right hip down. You see, if I wanted to rest a cup of coffee on your lower back without it spilling, that's what I'm looking for. A couple of you would be in trouble. Three. Good. Last two. One more inhale. Left hand down, feet together. That's done. Flat back inhale. Down dog. Step or hop the feet back. Lower slow if you want it. And cobra. And then downward facing dog. Standing stuff's over. Last strong minute or two of the practice. Hmm. And remember this, slide forward to plank position. And walk your hands forward to any degree that's challenging to you, but in an intelligent way. So you're not going to like get a hernia or something, you know. You can have the knees down, it's fine. Try not to have the hips so high so it's not downward facing dog. If your knees are down, really crawl the hands forward and challenge yourself. Yeah. We call it calisthenics. <laughs> The more you breathe, the more it's yogic calisthenics. Good. Feel the core rock solid. Good. Now listen. Walk your feet in about 60% of the way to the hands, maybe 70%. Come up to your tippy toes. Keep your palms flat on the ground. So you're on the tippy toes. On the tippy toes. Now what we're doing is a prep for a handstand. We're not going to move into it unless maybe one of you wants to. You would maybe press up into a handstand. Otherwise, press the palms down to lift your heels higher. Nice. And then walk your feet back. Plank position. Nicely done. Good. Last strong minute of the practice. Can you lower your forearms down without panicking? If not, you should have the knees down. Good. If you are panicking, just remind yourself that you're in a yoga class. Yeah, save your panicking for things like natural disasters. Good. You're in the last home stretch, last 30 seconds of strong stuff today. Good. Walk your feet in. Same idea. Walk them in halfway. It's called dolphin pose. You can walk them in as much as you feel comfortable with. But we don't want you to feel completely comfortable. Come up to your tippy toes only if you feel like you can sustain it. Last five breaths. If you want to lift your right leg, lift your right leg. Four. Three. Switch if you lifted it. Left leg. Two. Left leg down. Last one on the tippy, tippy toes. Child's pose. Nice job. Woo. Last down dog, inhale, rock up onto the hands and the knees, curl the toes, lift your hips up and back, 
Feel the presence of your mind, the availability, the openness of your heart. You guys deserve this one. Pigeon pose. Lift your right leg. Inhale. Step your right foot through. Heel toe your right foot over to the left side of your mat. And set that left knee down. Slide it way, way back. Yeah. If you'd rather lay on your back or take a different variation that's suitable to you, that's fine. Otherwise, you're trying to parallel your right shin to the front of the mat. At least come close to that. If you feel any pain whatsoever, ease off. If you feel a sensation, if you're not sure what you're feeling, you can't identify it, and you're a little newer, it's probably a strong sensation. You're probably doing it right. And in that case, you just breathe a little deeper, soften a little more, and you might be surprised at you know, how you feel when you exit this pose than when you entered it. Now, you see the vinyasa practice is primarily composed of movements with your breath. But anytime you hold the posture, it actually allows for more freedom. You don't hold the breath, you let it flow more freely. Hmm. Everybody slowly come all the way back up. Instead of coming back to down dog, lean into your right hip and swing the left foot to the round to the front of the mat. Place the soles of your feet together. Bhadrakanasana. Hands on the feet. Just sit up nice and tall. Root the sits bones down. This might be enough for you. Otherwise, take an inhale and then bend your elbows and pull yourself in as much as feels nice. Now let the sensation guide the intensity of your posture. Meaning... You control the intensity. You control the practice. You know, like any good artist will tell you, you get really good at practicing your craft so that your technique is very good. In this case, the technique keeps us safe. And then once you feel very safe with your technique, you let it all go out the window. You be a little more creative, a little more organic. You let it flow so you're not so rigid. And in this case, the canvas is your mat. You're the paintbrush. And everybody slowly come up. Pigeon pose on the left side. You're almost set up for it. Just swing the right leg behind you. Parallel your left shin to the front of the mat. Be on the top of your right knee as you slide it back. And take your sweet time to get into it. You know, you have the rest of your day to rush around. You know, I find that sometimes we, we rush just to get to yoga. <laughs> I find that sometimes I'm immediately challenged going into the parking structure after class. And you see, the idea is that yoga stays with us, not just for the 60 to 90 minutes that we're on our mats, but that it reflects into our everyday life when we leave here. You know, and it's not about talking. It's not about telling people about your practice. It's really just about demonstrating it and just the way you approach people, receive and act and interact. Take a few more deep, deep breaths. See what you can release. And then everybody slowly come all the way back up. Press the palms down. Swing the right leg around as you lean into your left hip. Straighten both legs forward. Last seated stretch. Point your toes back. Extend your arms up. Take a nice big inhale. Forward fold as you exhale. If you can't reach the toes and you don't have a strap or a towel to strap your feet up, bend your knees enough so you can grab your feet. It'll be fine that way too. Hmm. Hmm. And then 
then just one last inhale here. Let's lay down all the way onto the backside as we exhale. Mm, bend the knees, sliding right into what we call happy baby pose. Bring the hands to the outer edges of the feet. Pull the knees down towards the floor. Good. And let's do one back bend together. Feet, feet on the ground, hips width apart. We call it bridge pose. Press the feet down with the feet parallel. Lift your hips up. Take the hands either underneath your back to interlace the fingers. Maybe use a block under the sacrum for more restorative pose. Now, if you just came here to experience the benefits of yoga, to feel good, the stimulation, the circulation, you're in the pose for you. Now, if you want to open up your back more, if you're hyper flexible in your back, if you're working towards scorpion or any of that bigger stuff, that's when you need to get out the guns and go for the bigger posture. So if you want that, hands behind the shoulders, point your fingers forward, press up to the crown of the head, and then eventually press the arms towards straight. Either way, the benefits are the same. Use the breath, let it move through you. The breath is the medicine and the body is just a conduit in which the medicine can flow through you. Last inhale. Release all the way down as you exhale. Good. Last couple stretches. Reach out, hook your big toes, first two fingers. Spread the legs as far apart as you can. If, you, if reaching out and hooking the toes doesn't seem like it's doable, Bring your hands to your inner thighs. You might get more out of it, even if it is doable. Yeah. Hmm. And then release both knees together. Drop the knees to the left. Open your right arm over to the right for your final spinal twist. Any remaining tension in the body, see if you can let it go. Any nooks or crannies left unturned, untouched, any residual stress, try to soften it, dissolve it. You can come back to the center line, drop the knees over to the other side. Hmm. And then finally, into that last active thing. Hug the knees into your chest. Collectively, give yourself a huge hug. Might be the only hug you get today. Curl your nose to your knees, your knees to your nose. Give yourself some, some love. Take a nice big inhale. Hold that breath in for five, four. Sip in a little bit more air. Three, two, one, zero. Let it all go into Shavasana. Extend the legs forward. Turn the palms up, same way we started the practice. Eyes closed or covered or bow. No longer attentive to your breathing. Hmm, Shavasana. And through stillness, remember they say that you can see things more clearly. So in this now lucid state, And hopefully you can notice that all the physical layers of resistance are gone. And hopefully you can notice that the mental layers of stress have been relieved. So that now you can see more clearly your emotional state. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Energetic, spiritual state. And then if you look closely enough, a lot of the stuff that we experience is just an illusion. As you seek the truth. A little food for thought. Rest your bodies. And the deeper you let go, the deeper the reward will be. Welcome to yoga.
from here, everybody slowly start to come back into their bodies. No rush at all, but when you're ready, just wiggle the fingers, the toes, deepen the breath. Ideally, in a longer class, we lay here a lot longer. But officially, the time has come to close the practice. So when you're ready, bend those knees, roll over to one side. And then pressing the hands down, making your way up to a final seated position where we'll close today's practice with the hands together in front of the heart center, sitting up nice and tall. That's noticing how you feel, the presence of your mind, the availability, the openness of your heart. And let's try to keep them that way for the rest of the day. Let's take one last big inhale through the nose. Hold the breath in. Bow the mind to the heart. Open your mouth. Let it go. <sighs> Namaste.